All right, so we're looking at operations on rational expressions. First thing we need to do is we need to be able to simplify a rational expression. Um, as we can see here, uh, this is rational because we have variables in the denominator. And what we're gonna do is we are going to factor the top and the bottom. We're gonna see if we have any factors in common and anything divided by itself becomes one so we can get rid of it. Well, I can factor this quadratic right here. Of course, two numbers that multiply to get three, add to get four. We've got x plus one, x plus three. On the bottom, we have a difference of squares. So I left the x minus six alone. We couldn't factor that, but I factored the difference of squares. And we look, hey, we got a factor in common. x plus three divided by x plus three becomes one. And so those essentially cancel out, becomes one. We've gotten rid of it. And we are left with five x times x plus one on the top. And x minus six times x minus three on the bottom. We don't have any factors in common. There's not an x all by itself on the bottom to cancel out with the x on the top. There's not a five on the bottom to cancel out with the five on the top. We don't have anything that we can become one. So we have simplified that. Part B says, under what conditions is this expression undefined? Essentially, what values can x not equal? When we look at the original expression, and in fact, I'm gonna look at what it's already been factored to, we can set each of those factors equal to zero to find out what makes this denominator equal zero. Because that's when it's undefined, we can't have a denominator equal zero. So I've got x minus six equals zero, x minus three equals zero, and x plus three equals zero. When we solve these, we find out that six 3 and negative 3 all cause this expression to be undefined because no matter what three values, which any of these three values we choose, we will have a 0 in the denominator and therefore it will be undefined because we cannot divide by 0. Alright, next problem here we want to again simplify a very similar situation. I'm going to factor the top. Notice that in this expression, I have a w in common, so I'm going to pull a w out. I'm left with 4w minus 3y, and I have w plus y over here. I can't factor this. I'm going to leave it the way it is. On the bottom, I factor these. If I can, I've got 3y minus 4w, which is going to have to stay the same, and so everything on the bottom can't be factored. And we look, do we have any factors in common? Well, notice how these two right here are so similar. We've got 4w minus 3y, and we have 3y minus 4w, so can we rearrange these and make these actually the same factor somehow? Well, if we change the order of this one on the top and make it negative 3y plus 4w, this is the same thing. We have a negative 3y, we have a positive 4w, and I pull a negative 1 out of this. Imagine dividing both of these by a negative 1. So on the top, we now have w times negative 1, because I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from that factor, from this expression right here, leaving me with a positive 3y minus 4w, w plus y here. On the bottom I have 3y minus 4w, and I have 5w plus y. Now notice because we've rearranged and we were able to pull out a negative 1, these are now the same factor. Anything divided by itself becomes 1, so we can get rid of it. Negative 1 times w is a negative w. We've got w plus y over here. And on the bottom, we're left with 5w plus y. 
and these are not the same factor w plus y and 5w plus y cannot cancel out those do not become one because this is 5w this is not the exact same factor all right so we also want to be able to multiply and divide rational expressions and this is very similar to what we were just doing if we are multiplying then we do have one step before we simplify we need to multiply two fractions together we multiply the numerators we multiply the denominators if we multiply across the top 6 times 15 uh, gives us 90 we have 90 c times c is c squared and we also have d squared so we multiplied across the top on the bottom 5 times 8 is 40 we have a d we have an a and they're being multiplied together. So the first step is we multiply our numerators, we multiply our denominators, and then we're going to simplify anything we have. 90 over 40, we have to worry about the coefficients first. 90 over 40 reduces to give us 9 over 4. We've got c squared on the top, there's no c's on the bottom, so c squared is going to stay where it is d squared on the top, we have 1d on the bottom, so we're left with 1d on the top, and we have 1a on the bottom. And so this simplifies down to be 9c squared d over 4a. Another way to see that, here's, here's our answer, but another way to see that, find the prime factorization of 90. 90 would be 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. The prime factorization of c squared would be c times c. And d squared is a d and a d. We're breaking this down to be all of the factors in the numerator. In the denominator, 40 would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. We've got 1a we've got 1d. Well, once again, any factor of the top, which is also a factor of the bottom, becomes 1. So those 2's we can strike through, those 5's we can strike through, and we have 1d that we can cancel out. On the top, 3 times 3 is 9. c times c is c squared. We also have a d. On the bottom, 2 times 2 is 4, and we have 1a left on the bottom. Either way of getting this answer gives us the same answer. Moving on to b. Part b has division. Well, division's very similar to multiplication. We just have to keep, change, flip when we're dealing with fractions. Keep, change, flip. We keep the first fraction the way it is, 18xy cubed over 7a squared b squared. We kept that, we're now gonna change division to be multiplication and we flip the second fraction. We have 35a squared b over 12x squared y. And we can multiply across the top, we can multiply across the bottom and we can reduce those fractions. We can simplify our rational expression. 18 times 30 gives us 630. We've got 1x, or we've got 2a's, 1b, 1x, and 3y's. On the bottom, 7 times 12 is 84. We've got 2a's, 2b's, 2x's, and 1y. So 630 over 84 reduces to give us 15 over 2 a squared on the top, a squared on the bottom, all those a's cancel out. That's two on the top, two on the bottom, they're all gone. One b on the top, two b's on the bottom. We're gonna be left with just one b on the bottom. We've got one x on the top, two x's on the bottom. We'll have one x left on the bottom. We've got three y's on the top, two on the bottom. We'll be left with two on the top because of the same reasons that we had things leaving over here in the first problem.
We are canceling out things that appear on the top and the bottom. We can have polynomials in the top and the bottom. So, very similar to the last ones, except for what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor these first. I think it's going to help me out a little bit if I just go ahead and factor it instead of trying to multiply it all together. This x squared minus 6x minus 16, that is going to be x minus 8 times x plus 2. And we have this is being multiplied on the top by x minus 8. So we have times x minus 8 on the top. In our denominator, we have x minus 8 times x minus 8, which gives us this polynomial x squared minus 16x plus 64. Over here, when we factor this, we have x plus 2 times x plus 3. Because we are multiplying these, I know we're going to multiply across the top, we're going to multiply across the bottom, so we really have these three factors on the top, these three factors on the bottom. The x minus 8s can cancel out right there, we can cancel out those x minus 8s there, and we even can cancel out those x plus 2s right there. On the top, everything canceled out, it does not become 0, and things cancel out, it becomes 1. So we have a 1 on the top. On the bottom, we are left with x plus 3. Finally, we can deal with division the same way. I'm going to factor everything. We've got difference of squares right there. That's going to be x plus 4 times x minus 4. Down here, I can pull out a 12. We have 12 times y plus 3. We are dividing. On the top we have x minus 8 times x minus 4. And on the bottom we have y minus 6 and y plus 3. So we're going to keep change flip just like we did before because we are dividing two fractions. The first one's going to stay the same. We're going to multiply, which means I really just have to worry about my new numerator times the numerator, my denominators times my denominators. When I flip, I now have this y minus 6 times y plus 3 on the top, and this x minus 8 times x minus 4 on the bottom. Now I'm looking for factors that are in common. Look, I have x minus 4 on the top and the bottom. That becomes 1 y plus 3 on the top and the bottom, that becomes 1. And so I'm left with this x plus 4 times y minus 6. And on the bottom I have a 12 and x minus 8. And that's all it takes.